Hi, welcome to part 7 of the capsule and video series about impulse and momentum. We learned about elastic collisions in the last video, and in this one, we will learn about inelastic collisions. As we recall, an elastic collision is one in which both total kinetic energy and total linear momentums are conserved. If a collision is inelastic, the total linear momentum in an isolated system remains same, but the kinetic energy changes. Some of the initial kinetic energy is converted into other forms of energy during the collision, such as heat or sound energy. Following an elastic collision, each object in the system moves independently. In an inelastic collision, the items may move independently or together. The players are seen colliding and moving together in an image on the screen. As a result, this collision is definitely inelastic. In conclusion, a collision is wholly inelastic if, following a collision, all of the system's objects move together. If they move independently, we must perform additional computations to determine if the collision is elastic or inelastic. A car of mass 1650 kg traveling at a velocity of 25 meters per second to the left collides head on with a minibus of mass 3050 kg traveling at 15 meters per second to the right. The two vehicles move together as a unit in a straight line after the collision. First part of the question calculate the velocity of the two vehicles after the collision. The diagram on the screen effectively illustrates the conditions both before and after the collision. We start by typing the equation for the law of conservation of momentum in order to answer the question. Total linear momentums prior to the collision and following it are same. Next, we decide on right direction as a positive one. We have two moving objects before the collision and each of them has its own momentum. The formula for the momentum of the minibus can be written as mass of the minibus times velocity of the minibus. And the momentum of the car is mass of the car times its velocity. Even though we still have a minibus and a car after the collision, they now travel as a single object with a total mass equal to the sum of the masses of the minibus and the car, and a velocity of v. Mass of the minibus is 3050 kg and its velocity is 15 meters per second. Mass of the car is 1650 kg and its velocity is minus 25 meters per second as it is moving to the left. 4500 is equal to 4700 times v. Velocity is equal to 0.96 meters per second. The minibus and car will move to the right because the answer has a positive value. In the second part of the question, we must prove that the collision is inelastic. To do this, we must first compute the total kinetic energy prior to and following the collision, and then we must compare them. Before the collision, the kinetic energy of the minibus is 1 over 2 times 3050 times square of 15. The kinetic energy of the car is 1 over 2 times 1650 times square of 25. These two added together equal to 858,750 joules. Following the collision, the minibus and the car move together as a one unit. As a result, their kinetic energy is equal to 1 over 2 times the total of the two vehicle's masses. 3050 plus 1650 multiplied by the square of the two vehicles post collision velocity 0.96. The final value is 2165.76 joules. As is obvious, these two values are different from one another. This results in a difference in the total kinetic energy before and after the collision. Therefore, this collision is an inelastic one. In this video, we learned about inelastic collisions 
and work through a corresponding example. To further our grasp of this chapter, we will solve some more questions in the future videos. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications in order to be updated about the new videos.